When we talk about the IT industry, it's sometimes tough to understand what industry we're actually talking about. Are we talking about tech companies such as software companies like Adobe and Salesforce, or platform companies like Google and Microsoft? Do we talk about hardware companies like Cisco or, or chip companies like Nvidia? Never mind that lots of these companies are now bridging the physical and virtual worlds. Then think about ongoing trends like digitization or cloud computing versus future trends like generative AI. Any way you look at it, the IT industry is more pervasive and complex than ever. Now, add the business and finance of the IT industry. Now we're talking about things like on-site versus cloud, private versus hybrid versus public clouds, security, revenue recognition, deferred revenue, CapEx versus OpEx, and on and on. Let me give you an example. One trend we've seen over the past several years is the emergence of SaaS, or software as a service. Previously, we used to implement software packages like CRMs, or Customer Relationship Management Systems. There would be significant costs to buy hardware that we would then host on our network, significant efforts to customize and install the software on that hardware, and then perhaps even ongoing maintenance contracts. Financially, we'd have to know that some of these costs would be capitalized and would require significant amounts of cash up front. These costs would then be depreciated or amortized. In other words, they'd be spread over time. Some of those costs, though, would also be expensed, meaning it would hit our P&L right away. To make good business decisions, we should know which of those costs will be spread over time and which of those would hit us right away. In other words, we'd have to know CapEx versus OpEx. Now, with the emergence of SaaS, there are a lot fewer, if any, capital expenditures, but a lot more operating costs because we're not paying for the hardware or large-scale implementations like we used to. But now we're paying for licenses as we use them, and sometimes those ongoing license costs are more expensive than before. Now, people with good business acumen know the impact of decisions like hosting applications on-site versus using software as a service. They know how a decision like that fits strategically to support the business now and growth into the future. They also know how a decision like that impacts the finances of the company and how that decision will impact pressures on cash, profit, assets, growth, and people. If you're interested in the IT industry, you work in the tech world or are impacted by those decisions, there's no better time than now to start developing your business acumen to understand how tech impacts your current business, how it will drive future business growth, and what you can do about it. So know the fit, know the path, and know your part. That's just good business acumen.